1991, Angela Hammond had graduated from high school. Her boyfriend, Schaffer, was also got engaged with her, and they found out that she was pregnant. At the time of her graduation, she was about four months pregnant. Her boyfriend also promised to always take care of her. On April 4th, 1991, she dropped her boyfriend off to so her boyfriend could be with his little brother. And she went, she was leaving to go home. And seven blocks away from her boyfriend's house, she decided to make a stop to make a call at a payphone. Now, at this time, Angela Hammond saw a green truck pulling up that she did not recognize. She said that it was a green truck from the 1970s with a fish decal on the back of it. Then the mystery man went to the payphone and asked Angela if he could if he could use the other payphone. Then Angela and her boyfriend went back to their conversation. Now in the middle of the conversation, her boyfriend heard Angela screams and then the phone disconnected. Her boyfriend rushed to the scene, but sadly, he didn't make it in time. Now, he's riding his truck, and when he saw the green truck drive by, he knew Angela was in there. And he turned around, and he followed the truck for a while, but then his transmission gave out. It turned out that the how hard he, he went back into the transmission, it damaged it. The truck got away, and Angela and the mysterious man was never seen again. The saddest part is that the baby was never born and her mother never got to see her grandchild. Okay, bye-bye. Theodosia Burr, born 1783. She was the daughter of Aaron Burr. She was a controversial figure in her day after Hamilton alluded that her father had some relationships with the girl and her father ended up taking the life of Hamilton and Theodosia Burr actually helped her father and her flee the country and from that point her life only got worse it's believed that she was diagnosed with uterine cancer when her son passed she fell into a deep depression which made her go s want to go see her father that she hasn't seen for for a while and she boarded a boat that was supposed to take her to go see her father. However, the boat never arrived. In fact, it never arrived anywhere, and Theodosia Burr was never seen or heard from again. To this day, her disappearance remains a huge mystery. In 2004, Craig Freer was a 17-year-old high school soccer player with lots of friends and a girlfriend that he loved. Now, during his disappearance, he went to go see his girlfriend before heading to work. But however, when his mother went to his work, he noticed that he was not there. In fact, he wasn't there for quite a while. So his mother got a little worried and decided to call him. And fortunately, her son picked up. Now, Craig assured her on the phone that he would be home by that time to talk to her about it. But however, he never actually made it back home, and he has never been located since. The last sighting of him was by two teenage boys who reportedly saw him walking across a railroad track. Now, he, they said that he put a finger to his lips as he was doing a shh, and that was the last time anyone ever seen or heard from him. Now, his mystery remains a mystery, and we don't know where he is. Hope we can find him soon. Okay, bye-bye. On October 21st, 1978, Australian pilot... Frederick Valenick was flying his plane when he noticed that something was accompanying him, like an aircraft. That's when he informed the air traffic control that there was an aircraft that was 1,000 feet above from him. 
but the however, there was no other aircraft in the air at the time. Frederick described the aircraft as a long aircraft and it was being illuminated by four landing lights and it was coming from at him from the east. When asked to identify the object, Frederick couldn't. He can only describe its looks. He said that it had like a metallic like surface with a green light on it. And for the last time they asked how it would it, to identify the object. Now he said that it's not an object, but the transmission was abruptly cut to a loud like screeching sound. That's when all connection was lost. Nobody has seen or heard from Frederick since then. To this day, nobody has been able to find him or was able to find out what the mysterious object was. Okay, bye-bye. Sean Flynn, born 1941. He was a American actor and photojournalist. He grew up following his father's Errol Flynn's footsteps by becoming an actor. But then he started working for Time magazine. In 1970, he was sent to Cambodia on an assignment for the Time magazine. But however, on this day, he disappeared and was never seen again. One theory says that his entire crew was kidnapped, but nobody really knows for sure, and he has never been located since. I hope we can find him someday. Okay, bye-bye. Ben McDaniel, born 1980. He was a scuba diver in Tennessee. On August 18th, 2010, he was reported missing when, when employees discovered his truck that had been parked out there for two days. Now, Daniel was diving regularly while living with his parents nearby. On the day he went missing, he was last seen with employees diving into a cave at 58 feet. It is believed that he had drowned during the dive, but no traces of him were ever found in the cave. And some people think that his body was is somewhere in the cave, but it's inaccessible. But nobody knows for sure, and he has never been located since. Okay, bye-bye. James Tepperd, born in 1884. He was a World War Army veteran. He went missing in 1949. Now, two years prior, his wife also, his wife went missing. He claimed that he, she went to the market but never returned. Now, the place he disappeared was Bennington, also known as the Bennington Triangle, where many other disappearances also have taken place. In 1949, he went on a bus to go visit his family. He was spotted on the bus by other passengers, but when the bus stopped, James was gone. All the passengers said that he never left the bus, and he has never been located since then. And to this day, nobody knows what happened to him, and it still remains a huge mystery on how he could just simply vanish on a bus in front of a lot of people. In 1991, Michael Dennehy's mother was playing softball with her team while his father was spectating. The park was full of other spectators. Now, his parents let Michael play at a playground that was only a couple meters away from the park. However, when his father went to go watch him, there was no signs of him. He was just nowhere to be seen. And nobody had reported seeing anything. He was never seen again after today, and his body was never found, so we may never know what actually happened to him. Okay, bye-bye. See you in the next episode. Oh, and before I go, I want to say happy one-year anniversary to this series. 
I can't believe it's been one year since I started this series, and I'll continue making this series for years to come. Okay, bye-bye. In 1984, 12-year-old Sherry Lynn Marler awoke to see her stepfather going out to the bank, and she asked if she could tag along. Now, her stepfather was delighted to have her join him on the errand. Now, when they got to the bank, when Sherry saw there was so much paperwork to fill out, she got a little bored. So she asked her stepfather if she can go and get a soda, and which her stepfather handed her a dollar and told her to go get one from the gas station, which was only across the street. When her stepfather was done at the bank, he head back to his truck, and he assumed that Sherry was waiting for him there, but when he got to the truck, she was nowhere to be seen. So he waited a little bit, but when Sherry still did not return from the gas station, he began to worry. Now, her stepfather called her mom and asked if she had seen her, but of course, she hadn't. Sadly, this was the last time Sherry was ever seen, and to this day, nobody has been able to figure out what happened to the girl who crossed the street for a soda. In 1959, Bruce Campbell and his wife were heading from their home in Massachusetts to go visit their son. While on the way, they stopped at a motel, which was only meant to be their only night stop. Now, this did not go to plan. Now, everything was going good. And his when they went to bed, his wife went woke up several times that night. Now, the first time she woke up, everything was normal. Her husband was sleeping next to her, and everything was fine. But the final time she woke up, she noticed that Bruce was not in his bed. Now, of course, she checked around, and, and, he, and noticing that he was not in the bathroom, she knew that something was wrong. All of his belongings were in the hotel, including his wallet, his clothing, and his car, except for the bright green pajamas he had gone to bed in, the only thing that was missing from the hotel was Bruce. Now, she went to the door, which was unlatched, and unfortunately, this was the very last time Bruce was ever seen, and he was never seen again after this day, and there has since been no leads as to what happened to him or where he could have gone. It's quite puzzling how somebody can just literally, like, vanish without a trace like that. Okay, bye-bye. In January 1983, Oliver Munson purchased a vehicle, but then a couple months later, he was surprised to learn that the vehicle that he purchased was actually stolen, and the man that he purchased it from Dennis Watson was actually part of an auto theft ring. Now, Oliver didn't know about this, so he de decided to testify against Dennis in court. In 1984, three days before Oliver was to testify against Dennis, he left for work, and he never and he disappeared, and he never showed up to the school, and he was never seen again after this day. A few days later, his car was found. And also, a stolen car was found, but then there were two receipts with his name on it, but there was still no leads. Okay, bye-bye. In August of 1999, Dr. Gondard and his daughter and son rented a sailboat and headed out in France. But however, they were never heard from again after this time. Now here's where it gets weird. It turns out that the sailboat excavation was not planned. Dr. Gondard to told the man that he was going to rent the boat, that he was going on a little fishing trip, and that they will be back a few days later.
Now, here's where it gets a little weird. His wife did not go on a trip with him. Now, through the years, they did find his daughter's skull and and her dad's femur, but their bodies were never found, and they're still missing to this day, and their bodies were never found. Saul Solomon integrated to the United States from Israel with his family, and they ran a little business, which they were making really good money off of it. They lived in North Ridge for 10 years, but however, this was until their mysterious disappearance. They owned a few exotic cars and a few and a little bit of money, but when they searched their home after their disappearance, there's no signs of a struggle or robbery or anything. There was nothing stolen at all. The only clue they found was blood splatter in one of the rooms of the home, but later on, their passports were found along the highway. But we still don't know what happened to the Solomon family, or if, or maybe if they are, but if they're still alive today. On December 20th, 2021, L Lena Sadar Kill's mother took both her children to a neighborhood park in a suburban area of San Antonio. They were there for quite a while. Her mother watched her kids run around with other kids, and they had a really good time. Her mother stepped away just for a few minutes for unknown reasons, but when she came back, she noticed that Lena was nowhere to be found. She can only see her son. Now, she checked around picnic tables and everywhere she could in a panic. She even questioned some other uh, people if, she, if they had seen her, but nobody has. Her mother called the police, but they too could not find her either. She had just simply vanished and was gone without a trace. And she is still missing to this day. And nobody knows where she could be. And I hope she gets found safe soon.